Let's start right off, uh, Fuzz, here with uh, a definition. What is the definition, the theory of human evolution right now? Define it for us. Well, as presented in high school textbooks, it's this idea that, and, that humans and chimpanzees and the great apes share a common ancestor that existed roughly five to six million years ago. And from this ape-like ancestor, two evolutionary tree branches emerged one leading to the great apes and one leading to modern humans and the modern human pathway proceeded through a variety of intermediary forms like the Australopithecines and Homo erectus. All right, let's show them what you're talking about here. Here's, here's the current textbook, State of Tennessee in California, New York and other places and you've got one of these charts where you start off with a little ape-like creature and you boom, you go up to man, all right? And uh, then the other one has to do with the first ape-like creature that they think started the whole ball game, and that is Australopithecines. And you can see the branch over here, where you start with the branch, and then you got the different apes, and then you come down to man. So that's their idea. Now, what's this based on? Why do they think this is the way it happened? Well, what you're seeing in textbooks is an oversimplified view of how evolutionary biologists think human evolution took place. When you actually get into the scientific literature, you, what you see is actually chaos. It's very clear that there is a variety of different hominid forms that existed in, in Earth's past history, but evolutionists aren't clear among themselves how many species there were and how those species could have related one to another. Nobody knows which of the Australopithecine species could have given rise to the Homo hominids, the homo bipedal Yeah, primates. let's make a list, put the list up on the screen for people to see. They're saying the Australopithecines started the ball game off at about 4.4 million years ago. Right. The first true Australopithecines, four and a half million years and ago. And they got different ones that they found, so right. they got different names on them. But There's that's a variety the first of species. Isn't there species even earlier? Right. Prior to four and a half million years ago, there are a handful of forms that, we've, that have been recently discovered in the fossil record that predate the Australopithecines. These all seem to have the ability to walk erect, which is actually kind of curious, because as soon as these hominids appear, you see the ability to walk erect showing up immediately. We're you using the word hominid to mean what? Um, these ape-like animals that have the ability to walk erect, okay. to walk on two feet. Right. And what's the date for these creatures? Um, in the neighborhood of six to seven million years in, in age. Okay, so we go from that creature before Australopithecines to what, Homo habilis? Homo habilis is the first Homo bipedal primate. Okay, two million years ago. Right, and then 1.8 million years ago is Homo erectus. Okay, and then? And then you have Neanderthal uh, around 150 to 200,000 years ago, and some evidence indicates they may have actually persisted to around 40,000 years ago in that neighborhood. Okay, so then, and then after Neanderthals, that's supposed to be the closest link to man, and then right. we have man showing up where? Uh, uh, there's a, an explosion of modern human fossils in the 40 to 50,000 year time frame.